Someone in the comments section once asked me if I'd played RimWorld, and my answer to that question was no. I've had a bit of a creator's block with Project Zomboid, so I decided to light that fire back up. I'm gonna try something new. So I hopped on Steam, bought RimWorld and all of its DLCs, and dived in. Now I have only played the tutorial, and from my expert's opinion, it teaches you next to nothing. And I had two ways of learning, dive into a YouTube coma and watch every video possible, or just dive into the game. That got me thinking, everybody loves to watch someone struggle, right? So we scrapped the YouTube idea, started up our first ever colony, picked a nice quiet starting spot with not a lot of hostiles around, and as the only rule I had, I started with the first three survivors I was given. It was safe to say, I got screwed. Welcome to my first attempt at escaping Rimworld. So as our three survivors crash land, firstly I'll apologise for the black bars at the top and bottom. I don't think I quite have got it set up correctly for recording yet. If you do make videos on Rimworld, let me know if you can set it to 4K as the quality seems a bit poor as well. Now to introduce the survivors. Reynolds, the 30 year old teacher, she's lazy and teetotal. She loves to talk and has an artistic side which you would expect, but also fancies herself in some hand to hand combat. Blitz on the other hand is a civil engineer. He's a night owl and fortunately for him he's quite ugly. With his engineering background he loves to build things and likes to dabble his toes into cooking and mining. And finally, last but not least, Bradley. He's only 18, loves animals, is slothful and I don't I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on YouTube, so I'll just say he's attracted to people of the same sex. What I didn't know before I had started and looking at their skills, both Reynolds and Bradley are incapable of doing dumb labour. Safe to say, this is why I got screwed. As our pods crash landed, we took our new skills from the tutorial and began to play some walls next to this small rocky area. The idea came to mind that was to build into the rocks to save some resources in the long run. As I built my stockpile area, this was when I first realised it was only Blitz hauling the loot from the pods. So as he will be doing all the carrying in this episode, he got new trousers, a vest and a helmet, along with the rifle. As the walls began to go up, I placed three beds for my survivors to sleep in. This was when Reynolds finally decided to step in and help out by putting up the last bits of the roof. I also attempted to play around with the work schedule, but in all honesty, I don't quite understand it just yet. Reynolds began mining some of the area to the rear so we could expand later when required, all while Bradley enjoyed a nice lay down among some of the supplies. Again, after the bulk of the work had started, he finally began chipping him, gathering some wood. I also forgot to mention that we bought down a donkey from space called Chump. Don't get too attached to him. We put down a sleeping spot for him in the main shelter, which became a big mistake. By the end of night one, everybody had climbed into bed and we were off to a good start. We had walls, a roof, and everybody had somewhere to sleep. There were some complaints around the recreational activity my screen was telling me, so for when everybody woke up, I placed a horseshoe stick throwing thing outside. I also managed to find the fertility overlay in the bottom right corner for the best planting spots and placed a grow zone in the fertile spot to the east. We placed down a research table so we could begin moving our intelligence forward and placed down some wood flooring. I can be honest and say I didn't really know what to do, so I just started placing things down that made some sense to me. Everybody was up on day two and construction went very well. The horseshoe stick thing was done, the new wooden floor was in, and we also added a torch for a bit of light. Blitz began planting some rice in our grow zone and I set Reynolds on with some more mining. With the addition of the research bench, there wasn't much space left in the main area. The day went fast as I had fast forward on most of the day and everybody was back in bed. I did add the battery to a research table so hopefully we can get some power soon. I used the work screen again to set Bradley as our hunter. He seems like he's done nothing but mope around since we landed, so I gave him the revolver and set him out with hunting a few animals on day three. I noticed a small notification about animal filth and realised the donkey was stuck in the main room. Whilst this was going on, Bradley came across the ancient danger. The note mentioned a great danger, so I suspect I need to leave that alone for now. After a number of attempts to try and get Chump out of the main building, I decided to concede and broke down the wall to let him out into the rear area with a new bed. After a full day out on the hunt, Bradley managed to kill off a small rabbit and a raccoon. Not the greatest haul, but with his poor shoe in skills it was better than nothing. Reynolds being the night owl she was, she continued on with her mining into the night whilst Blitz and Bradley got ready for day four. On day four we put the stove and the butcher's table in so we could begin cooking our own meals. Blitz butchered the first two animals then got to work cooking some simple meals for the group. As you can probably tell, Blitz does pretty much everything around here. 
On day 5 I took away all of Blitz's work so he could focus on hauling all of our materials into the stockpile. Bradley spent a little bit of time chopping down some trees and Reynolds continued on with the mining. We did however get the chance to name our faction and our settlement. Again, I had no idea what this meant so I did a few randomises and settled on Concord of Pabo and Altiurus. Once everything was hauled, Blitz didn't get his break as all of his work was added back in. At this point he decided to call it a night and went back to bed. I finally realised I had some resources to build sandbags for defence so as the tutorial taught me, I stuck up a small spot. On day 6 we added some more wood floor into the rear area just for the cosmetics, then realised Reynolds and Bradley wouldn't clean either. Bradley did decide to help Blitz planting some of the crops in the grow zone though. I decided to tag a couple of gazelles for Bradley to go out and hunt as it seems that it's all that he's good for at the minute. He seemed to be having a really hard time doing so though, just running around firing aimlessly at anything but his prey. I did tag a load of berry bushes for the additional food and to this point in post editing I still don't know if they ever actually did do it. We finally got our first visitors from the Alliance of Seers, two gents by the name of Orange and Exaga. As they arrived we sent out Reynolds to do our first bit of trading, selling off our excess pants and buying in some herbal medicine. We were suddenly hit by a manhunter pack though, as I looked into the note and was told it was a pack of rats. My options were to hide for one to two days, or fight them head on. Upon jumping to the location I spotted one rat, so I felt it was safe to finally draft up my group and face it head on. What I didn't see at this point was the second rat following him from behind. We drafted the squad and set ourselves up at the sandbags. Another bonus was that we had the visitors to back us up with some moral support. It was also time to say goodbye to Chump. He kept dropping his guts on the floor and he was getting hungry, so I felt it was best we ate him before he lost any more weight. Not a lot happened on day 7, Bradley was back out and about firing his revolver aimlessly. Blitz continued cooking meals, but I did find out that Blitz had been rejected by Reynolds in his attempt to kindle up a bit of romance. On day 8 we started a larger section of mining to begin moving the survivors into their own bedrooms, and continued on with the floor expansion where Reynolds had cleared. We moved the butcher's table and created a private kitchen for Blitz to make it a little more appealing, and began to add the hallway towards the new mining area. As day 9 was about to begin we were sent a message regarding summer, just another thing to contend with in this game, as if there wasn't enough already going on. We now have to manage the heat and the cold. I did take note of the requirement for parkers in the winter though. Bradley and Blitz spent all day harvesting and cooking meals with the rice we'd grown and Reynolds made some good progress with the mining area, but after 9 days of being on this little planet I realised my food was spoiling as it was sitting outside not refrigerated. We decided to create a stockpile for the food in the mining area and began working on a way to keep food frozen. We found the cooler in the temperature tab so added it in without knowing it needed power, so midway through day 10 we finally added a fuel generator and got the cooler up and running. With the temperature set Blitz began hauling all the food into the new refrigerator and I finally began to feel like we were getting somewhere. The next problem I faced though was our medical supplies were deteriorating outside as they were also exposed to the elements, so it was time to build a storeroom for the rest of our goods. Day 11 started with Bradley getting food poisoned from the dirty cooking area, quite clearly Blitz wasn't keeping a high standard in his new kitchen. It might also be a good time to mention we're using Randy Random and the third highest difficulty. The reason I call it this is because I can't remember what it was called. I think it's something along the lines of Adventure Star Sorry, but I could be way out. Randy has sent us our first psychic drone, which only affects males, just 66% of our colony is going to be miserable then. This was followed by Bradley having a complete mental breakdown, the final straw was his intense pain from the food poisoning, but I'll put it down to all the animals he's killed. On day 12 Blitz finally began construction on the new storage area, but this was soon interrupted by the news of Heron crashing his transport pod. I clearly needed more members to assist with the day to day activities at the base, so on day 13 I rushed to build a prison area for potential new recruits to join me. It was safe to say by the time we'd actually finished construction, Heron was either dead or had been rescued as he was nowhere in sight. I also realised the cooler had stopped working or it wasn't cooling the refrigerator enough. My first thoughts here was it was because I had blocked in the generator and it was getting too warm. So on day 13 we dismantled the walls around it to let it breathe and finally added in a second cooler just to ensure we were covered. On day 14 we were offered our first quest with the potential of earning some extra cash from some 
valuables that were not too far down the road. But with no idea how to get there yet, and the thought of taking on two man-hunting monkeys, I decided to give this one a miss. We sent Blitz into the back room to do some cleaning, later that day we finally got some walls up for the potential new bedrooms, and once again, blocked off the nice kitchen. Day 15 greeted us with a caravan of traders approaching. It was time to send Reynolds back out to do some trading. We managed to sell all of our leather we had stocked up from slaughtering animals and managed to grab three parkers ready for the winter. The tips from the AI really came in handy here, as I would never have bought them otherwise. We also grabbed 200 frumbo meat just so we had a nice stock ready for winter if required, and by the end of day 15 the majority of the building work was done and it looked like we finally had three new bedrooms ready for the survivors to move into. We didn't do a great deal on day 16 apart from watching the caravan sail off into the distance. And only on day 17 we added the final touches to the bedroom, adding in the floors and doors. We also made the request to move the beds so they could all sleep peacefully without Reynolds waking them up being a night owl. Just as it approached bedtime we were struck with our first double whammy. Blitz got sad and began aimlessly wandering around whilst the tribe of Tranka began to raid us. Rodaballo was approaching from the west so we drafted up two of the three and headed for the sandbags. With Blitz just wandering around aimlessly though and Rodaballo approaching him, we had to leave the safety to take the fight into the open. We got pulled the long way around the rocks but we caught his attention and began to beat him up. I still don't know why Bradley didn't use the revolver he had in his hands. We locked Rodabello in the prisoner's bed, hopefully he was to become a new recruit. We treated his wounds, then Bradley decided to throw a tantrum and started to smash up the base. Not ideal when Blitz is still wandering, Reynolds is asleep and we have a prisoner locked up in the base. Luckily, Blitz came around just in time as Rodabello became berserk. We did get everybody drafted in time though to get up and capture him again, but he did need a new door. Towards the end of day 18 I realised we'd been struck by a solar flare, nothing major, it does shut down both of our fans for the day. On day 19 Rodabello had been struck by an infection, but I wasn't going to give up on him as I needed to keep him alive to join our group. We did build a medical bed in the next room but I couldn't move him there to be treated for some reason so I just left him where he was. We were also given a new quest, Ship to the Stars, which I suspect is how we get off this planet and back to safety. Upon further inspection this was at the other side of the map and with comments of a long difficult series of battles there was no chance I was ready. We had another transport pod crash close by and this time it was a neutral called Mara so we turned the medical bed back into a prisoner bed and headed out to capture her. Reynolds made the long walk over to pick her up then dropped her back in a new bed. Again another infection so more medical supplies drained. We finished off the day collecting a load more rice that Bradley had been harvesting and with our survivors in their new rooms we moved into day 20. On day 20 we had some noise regarding the eating arrangements so we decided it was time to put in a table and some chairs. The one thing I've noticed is if you want to be successful in this game you seem like you have to keep your survivors happy and giving them somewhere to sit and eat would hopefully help that. We also planned in to add some bedside tables to the bedrooms as they felt like their bedrooms were ugly. Blitz's mood somehow went through the roof on experience and inspiration. Unfortunately it was for a higher chance in surgery. Not something I know where to even start. Reynolds ended up in a daze, probably another one that was unhappy and we had a cheerful walk joined the area lurking around outside in the sun. Little did I know that on day 21 things took a huge turn for the worse as that friendly walk decided to hunt Bradley whilst he was out throwing his horseshoes. Bradley did fire one shot but after neither of them did decided to fire their guns, just prod the warg with it instead. After a short fight, Blitz went down in combat, shortly followed by Bradley. This was where my first issue of not being capable of dumb labour really hit home as they both slowly crawled for their beds. Reynolds was still in a daze and wouldn't assist. Just as they made it through the front door, some traders arrived and knocked out the warg after it attacked them. Blitz didn't make it out of the first room, and Bradley was so close to making it back to bed before he passed out. Before I could attempt to do anything, Blitz was dead, and after checking on Bradley, he had one hour left to live. As you can probably guess, he died as well. As Reynolds woke up, she did nothing, as she was incapable of doing anything. She wandered around aimlessly through the night, getting annoyed at the bodies that laid there on the floor. My only hope was that she could recruit the two prisoners and get the community back on its feet. Mara was fully healed, and Reynolds continued to care for them both, but days went by where neither of them would join the group. We did dig two graves, which we could not put them in. All of the power was off, and the food was slowly spoiling. And this warg looked to have ruined my first attempt at escaping Rimworld. It's weird how quickly you begin to attach yourself to these three survivors 
members. Know what they do and don't like, what they're good at, and in this case, what they're not. But this first run was never going to be the one. It was about learning little tips like animals dropping the guts everywhere, finding the fertility thing in the bottom right, knowing we need a parker for the winters, how to get some access to power, and what I finally realised is I didn't have the option on to recruit prisoners just the option to tend for them. I did finally begin the process of recruitment, but at this point it felt like we were too far gone. So next time, we start anew. Hopefully, with better luck on the survivors. I hope you've enjoyed the beginning of my journey into RimWorld, and let me know if you're going to be sticking around with me till I finally escape this planet. Trust me, I'm not leaving this game till we get off this planet, and when we do, who knows what we'll try next. I'm JPGZ, good night and goodbye.